bit of a yearbook open. It is fun looking at some of those old pictures, photographs, and video of days gone by here at Gulfstream Park. I mean, so many great races over the years with a racetrack that first opened Ron Nicoletti and Jason Blewett, by the way, joining you February 1st, 1939, so long ago. And you've been here for quite a while, not since 39. Not since and, 39. I mean, this place is one of the great cathedrals in the United States for racing. And just the fact it was closed for a little while after that for World War II. They used this as a staging point uh, for trucks and stuff like that. Then we came back and uh, uh, Gulfstream Park has been going strong ever since. And I've been here not quite that long, but it's getting to feel like that. You know, the other day was my 30th opening day here. Pretty incredible. <laughs> and opening day, as this guy celebrated his 30th, it was my first. So we're on opposite <laughs> ends of the spectrum there. We look that way. And I don't want to take any shots at you early on <laughs> no, today. It's yet. good to have everybody with us. Not at the start you're of the on week. Me, you're picking on me already? And you don't have any backup with Acacia. <laughs> That's right. And Acacia okay. Courtney, for those uh, in the know, and if you follow Acacia on Twitter, she has worked extremely hard. She is a workhorse to begin with, but uh, the dedication she has had in this run-up to uh, Miss Florida, correct? Miss Florida, she's representing Gulfstream Park in awesome. Miss Florida, USA, which I believe happened Saturday night. So, uh, Acacia, if you're listening to us out there, good luck from everybody here and uh, got a lot of fans. And she worked hard to get this. You better win. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. We hope yeah. she wins. And once we can vote, we'll let you know if there's ever a time the public can right. vote. We'll certainly get you up to speed in that department. So, no Acacia this week. We miss her. We send her love and the best of luck, but we do, of course, turn the page as it is day number nine of this championship meet. The weather just perfect. I saw up in the Big Apple, very cold, very windy. They canceled up at the Big A, but it is nice down here with plenty of sun, fast and firm conditions, and some multi-race wages to get to, Ronnie, as we jumpstart a big week here, a five-day week, anchored by five graded stakes on the Saturday card, which they are in the process of putting together now. Whew, little... Four G's and counting, man, yeah. in that high five. In the high five, and only seven runners in the first race, so it's eligible, and uh, you don't have to put that much money in it. Maybe you could take that <laughs> down and have uh, some money for the uh, early pick five, along at which starts in race number one. For just 50 cents. Yeah. That's right. Now, even a cheaper wager that includes one more race is our Rainbow Six, which for the minimum, it's a 20 cent bet. You get a lot of bang for your buck in the coverage and spreading department. And after Luch, our good buddy Ron Paolucci took down the Rainbow Six about a week ago. That carryover is steadily, steadily grown and growing. It's about 40,000. About 40,000. And of course, we end the day with our final pick five. And Jason will have a ticket in just a little bit. Also a 50 cent wager. So lots to like about the, the wagering this afternoon. Fast main track firm turf course came over. Bet anyone that couldn't find the cloud in the sky. And again, I mean, <laughs> it is blue sky here in South Florida and sun to really make you feel great. It is just so therapeutic walking around with the palm trees swaying. And <laughs> I, the thing I love about Gulfstream, there's many things, but just the aesthetics. You get a real classy but relaxed beachy vibe down here. And obviously, we are taking it all in. We're in our glory out here. And glad you you're coming along for the ride. tell it's his first year here. He's watching the palm trees still. Yeah, I'm like a tourist. I'm waiting to get hit by a coconut most of the time. <laughs> oh, that's what happened, huh? <laughs> Must have happened a, a few times, Let's right? Let's get to work. Get all right. to work. D dude, you made it too easy there. Anyway, all right, the pick five, the early pick five. Here's my little ticket, a $12 play. It does look, Ronnie, that I would say most, most with a budget are likely in the fourth race going to be 
anchoring their their sequence, their plays in the early pick five with Barbados Kitten. Yeah, Barbados Kitten certainly the one to beat that in the afternoon. And just like uh, Wesley Ward, excellent with horses doing exactly what that horse is going to do, and a very affordable twelve dollar ticket. So, uh, and I think you got the logical two in the opening leg. I'm hoping that's the case, and this is a card uh, that you're going to see quite a few snowbirds, as we like to call them. Uh, Todd Pletcher, Chad Brown, Christoph Kamat. I mean, even guys who had strings down here in the summertime through July or so, they're in action beginning this week in full force. And of course, the first week and change of this championship meet, mighty fine to trainer Todd Pletcher, your leading trainer here at the meet with seven victories and counting. But speaking of Chad and Christoph, they have the New York shippers that are going to attract a lot of attention in race number one. And there's just something great, Ronnie, about starting any day and especially any new week of racing with a good looking turf race. And we have that here in spades with these Phillies and Mares. And we got the exact, exact there in here. And we started it off with number seven, Quad, beating a half length at this level and distance here in December. A and I just think this horse is the one to beat. You mentioned Christoph Clement. He's got the daughter of Warfront training sharply up at Payson Park. And if you're not aware, Payson Park, a deep surface, really legs the horses up nicely. So Quant, but you got to have Enchanting Kitten somewhere on your ticket. Who's very lightly raced. I mean, you get Johnny V and Chad here with a uh, filly who's needed some time. I mean, maybe that's the one knock on her. She's lightly raced, which I like, but on the flip side, she has needed quite a bit of time after each of her four career races. That being said, Chad does really well with these layoffs, and there's no reason to expect and not expect in a race like this, she's going to run. And uh, as Chad looks to put the finishing touches on what is likely a second consecutive Eclipse Award winning season with about $26 million in purse money won. It's just incredible. That's enchanting. Kit. Yeah, and you know, she has that fifth play finish, but it was behind uh, another Chad Brown horse, that multiple grade running stable and made new money, honey. That was in the grade three wonder again. Poor showing in that allowance company up at Saratoga, but you're absolutely right. Chad off the layoff, especially here at Gulfstream Park. Absolute money must use on your ticket. Now, one of the lead dogs year-round in the South Florida training colony is obviously trainer Ralph Nix, and he is in the mix with a filly by the late Wildcat Air. Her name is Equemini, and she packs a wallop. When she gets a full head of steam, I mean, she is capable of some strong finishes, and we'll show you her last race, and I thought a good race to get her going off a little bit of a layoff back on November 1st, and she got a, a real nice ride that day. The ride you expect Edgar Zayas to put in more often than not on the turf, saving ground around both turns and a very game inside trip slash inside run for Equemini who's down inside with those white blinkers. And not for nothing, if we can just freeze it here, the horse that's in front, this uh, Noble Ready, she's a stakes accomplished filly trained by Chad Brown as Equemini with these white blinkers and the yellow cap right here with the, uh, look at VZ, boom, EZ, great ride from Edgar, and we'll let it roll down to the finish line. Yeah, Ronnie. and I mean, I thought this horse had to wait for a little racing room, uh, turn it for home, always in a turf race. You got to get the trip. I thought this horse ran very well that afternoon. Have it on my ticket, but not for as far up as you do. But I did put the number two Pensacola on my ticket. He's making her North American debut for Graham Motion. You got it in fourth. I have it in third. And this one, I want to show you stat on Graham Motion uh, with foreign shippers, first time Lasix on the turf. He's really solid. He's a seven for 58. 29%. 53% in the money, and he's got a positive return of investment. I always like Graham Ocean when he brings those European shippers here to Gulfstream Park in the winter. And just one on there. But I, once again, think you have the logical two on your mm -hmm. ticket with the six and seven. Well, that horse definitely adds another layer for one of the best trainers and horsemen and well-respected horsemen in the nation. Nice to have Chad, Kristoff, and Mr. Graham Motion joining us here for a Wednesday afternoon at Gulfstream Park. As we move on to race number two, we hit the main track, and we bring on a group of three life time three and up Philly Amer claimers they meet at three quarters of a mile this race to me Ronnie what jumps off the page is the amount of early speed and in picking our horse on top the number 10 Princess Knoll she's our horse you've got her on top I've got her on top as well her overall recent body of work for trainer Aubrey Mirage is pretty good, and I think she's the one that's really going to sit the right trip. Yeah, she's going to sit the trip. She's dropping to this $6,250 level. First start since following a pair of sharp efforts uh, against uh, that this claiming level. Comes back, tracks the pace, finishes second against 12-5 condition claimers, and I think, as you said, sets up perfectly. Got that outside stalking trip today, and looks like the one to beat, especially on the drop in here. With Poopsie Doopsie, Daisy Creek, 
a little Fiore towards the outside with Edgar. They are going to be, I think, flying early on. Princess Noel may trip out there on the drop. I thought the four case dismissed. And normally, I tend not to really give a long look to plotting deep closing horses over this main track. But again, I thought the fractions would be fast and she would put in a run to potentially get involved for the win end of things. As we come up, Ronnie, on race number three, another sprint on the main at seven furlongs. This three and up, A other than $50,000 allowance race features a pretty sharp uh, Nick Zito trained horse. You would never know looking at the figures and some of the company lines that the number four Lenstar is just one for a dozen. But I feel this son of Shackleford is the starting point because he was beaten by a good one last time out of Keeneland and ZZ Rocket. Yeah, it's ZZ Rocket, a perfect three for three. This one, uh, Lenstar making its local return for Nick Zito. First start, a yielded lady finished third to the horse we were just talking about. First level allowance going seven eights at Keelan. Luis Saez, our leading rider. He's nine for 37. He's winning at a 24% clip. Uh, it certainly adds to the appeal on this horse. Why I put it over number three, Flay of Soul. So Flay of Soul, great name. I like that. Love the name, love the <laughs> connections as well. The uh, Bonomos, just great people. Anthony Jr., a very uh, close friend of mine, and I'm hoping they have one ready to roll off the layoff. I mean, after all, this son of Union rags and a price a yearling purchase at that hasn't run in about 280 days. So it's about nine months, but fear not. Digging through Formulator, and there are many, many otherworldly stats with trainer Todd Pletcher at this meet exclusively. And just looking at his Gulfstream starters and dirt sprints coming off a layoff of greater than six months, he's gone 21 for 50, Ronnie. That's it's amazing. 42 percent. 42 percent. He's in the money 62 percent of the time, as you can see there. Uh, positive return of investment a little low, but that, but that's because everybody knows how well he does here. And this player, so he's a, a half to a multiple graded stakes places. Senor Rojo, Connie and Michael, who I remember, and High Ridge. Yeah. So a lot of nice breeding in there. And uh, I, I think, once again, we got our flip-flop of those that are logical, too, in this third race. Yeah, you have Zito, who's kind of got the recency, even though he hasn't run with Lenstar since the middle of October. And then on the other spectrum, you've got Todd, of course, with the key layoff runner. And it may just come down to those two in race number three. We'll see. Moving on to the fourth this afternoon. It's a 10-race card, so we inch closer and closer to that $40,000 Rainbow Six carryover. Race number four might just feature. It's not a part of the pick six, but it's in the early five, it's in the early four, and it might just have the shortest price favorite on the card in this $20,000 turf. Three and up, Philly and Mayor made in Claimer, and you get the sense the Ramses with a homebred by Kittens Joy, who at one time was off for a little over a year. They are saying, let's drop. Maybe someone takes Barbados Kitten. We want to win the race, and I think that's what's happening here. Horse and away, Ronnie, almost looks too good on the yeah. paper. Drop it to the 20 level, racing without the blinkers this afternoon. After getting nailed at the wire when beaten ahead, that was against 40 maidens going a mile. It was on the Belmont turf. But I want to show you a stat on Wesley Ward with horses making a 50% drop in claiming price with blinkers off. One of the key angles with uh, Wesley Ward always takes the blinkers off for some reason when he gets here on the turf. Seven for 14, 50%, 71% in the money with a $3.44 return of investment. So lots to like, especially the big drop. Well, evidently he wants his horses to take in the surroundings yeah, and stare up at the, it's just at the swaying palm trees like yours truly <laughs> right. is doing. And the horse can see if a coconut is falling, getting back to what we said No earlier. kidding. <laughs> All right, fourth race, Ronnie and I both have the big favorite right. Barbados kitten on top. We'll uh, cap the same exact, in fact. The same ice cold oh, super factor. Look at that. <laughs> we might have to play the high five here yeah. in race number four. We've been pretty much agreement. I got one horse that's flip flopped in there. Yeah, I, I took a look at your picks <laughs> not before, obviously after I'm a man of a great, great <laughs> ethics and honor, but I said uh we are we are pretty much in the same boat throughout the afternoon. So it's the old either gonna have a big day and we do so together or as hide. a team, <laughs> or we'll be hiding and nobody will be out here with Acacia <laughs> off. The only person you'll hear is is tracking out Sir Pete Aiello. <laughs> so with the fourth down, we can focus in on the Rainbow Six. We've got a rainbow to catch, and we've got a lot more coming your way after this quick break.
Welcome back to this live Wednesday edition on a fast and firm day number nine of Gulfstream Park today. Jason and Ronnie catching up with you from our Gulfstream studios. The sun is out, a picture perfect day for thoroughbred racing. And do want to thank, before we go any further, the fans. The numbers have been terrific, and we thank all of you for the great support as we are just getting underway to what will be the biggest championship meet ever here at Gulfstream. Without a doubt, and uh, as you mentioned at the top of the show on Friday, five graded stakes, grade three stakes and that's just uh, just a little taste of what we'll be yep. giving you all uh, winter long. Yeah, so. major stepping stones with those Saturday five graded stakes with the uh, Harlan's Holiday a uh, potential prep for the Pegasus. You never know, uh, Mr. Jordan and uh, well, Destin. Fast. He is a rocket ship, but, but a rocket ship with quality and yeah. he's danced. I mean, if you're a, a fan of the game and in particular South Florida racing, you, you just got to have a lot of respect for Mr. Jordan. Got to see him. I think it was, I don't know if it was his debut over at Gulfstream Park West or his second Second start. No, he came from Mom, but there was a second start. It's going back last year too, mm -hmm. and he was just gone. I said, "This was going to be something special," and sure enough, he's. Uh Moved right along. That was a great performance last time. Yeah, out. for trainer Eddie Plisa, winning the uh, Millions Classic preview over at GPW for just as easy as he pleased. I mean, it was a paid public workout. So he'll be taking on Destin and a few others in the Harlan's Holiday here on Saturday. But we got to get through today's Rainbow Six. And speaking of Destin and his trainer, Todd Pletcher, this is a very, and Todd's got one in race number five. This is a very, very tricky turf made in claiming race. Basically, dominated by varying layoffs between all the major contenders. I'm anxious to see who you got cooking in this opening leg of the rainbow. Well, I went three deep, and for all the reasons you just mentioned, I got the, are you talking to me? But I also have 10 Downing Street, who I thought was very interesting, and Big Fridge from the Sean Creaky Barn, a little bit of a price. And you see the progression, $43.20 today, no singles. I tried to find one, I just couldn't do it. I was hoping that Wesley Ward horse, as you right. mentioned, was mm -hmm. in there, but that's not the case. So $43.20, and as Jason mentioned, at the top of the show, as we mentioned at the top of the show, carry over starting the bill, so it's a great wager, only 20 cents. Always a lot of fun. Keep us in the loop if you're involved in the rainbow, especially yep. if you're halfway home or four legs in and you want to let anybody <laughs> know, please let us know. Luch did that last week, and that was a lot of fun rooting him on in the last couple of legs before he took took down basically $100,000. Now, why don't we begin with your top pick and one of three you used on your Rainbow Six ticket, and that is a son of Tapazar in Are You Talking to Me, who's done something that nobody else in here has done, and that's cross the finish line first. And he was aptly named, I would imagine, he was saying last time, are these stewards? Are they talking to me? Because he was disqualified from that win at GPW back on October 9th. Let's check out the race and we'll uh, let you know what happened with this Ralph Nix trained son of Tapazar. Things were going very well at this point. Even money, Gaffleone's got him up close and kind of covered up in between horses on a turf course uh, in which you wanted to be up close early on. They'll split rivals there as the number seven and as they come down the stretch, uh, this horse will start to drift outward uh, Tyler back over to that left hand and there you see the drifting little bit of an interference play with the horse between and the horse on the outside and you know what stewards adjudicated for quite some time and guilty was the call but you're undeterred, and you think he's going to break his mane. Well, if you watch that race at Gulfstream Park West, and if you watch the head-on, the horse deserved to come down, in my estimation. Mm -hmm. But as soon as they get to where the temporary rail ends, horses sometimes, whether they're being hit left-handed or not, tend to drift a little bit. It was just an unfortunate move. I'm going to forgive him for that. I like the connections. Ralph Nix uh, keeps the status quo. He's got Tyler Gaffleone in the saddle this afternoon. Yep. And I just think he's the one to beat. He drifted out, but I, I, I'm going to forgive him for that. So on top of my ticket, but... I I want to hear about this five horse from Todd Pletcher that I did not use. Well, this Pletcher horse is not your typical Pletcher looking horse by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, it's really an oddity to see Todd with a second time starting uh, maiden claimer here on the turf who hasn't run to boot in well over a year. In fact, 510 days between races. My feeling is, and this isn't, sometimes you see these Euros, maybe they were owned at one point by Flaxman Holdings or by Coolmore and they cost a ton of money and they just didn't pan out overseas and then they get sold and brought to the U.S. Now, this horse was a very modest Kentucky yearling sale purchase of 30,000 owned by Eclipse Thoroughbred Partners. I don't have any steam. This is just me saying, you know what? Todd Pletcher won three races here last Friday afternoon, including paying about $30 to win on the turf with a horse <laughs> who didn't fit the quote-unquote typical 
Fletcher looking Gulfstream mode and uh, mold. And that's why I'm going to take this horse first time out in this country for Todd and Johnny V. He's gelded. He's getting Lasix. Oh, uh, very interesting. You're going to see how the board plays out. Maybe uh, if it takes a lot of money, maybe the word is out. A horse that I, as you can see by my selections, wanted to watch one. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I've been known to get beat by Todd Fletcher awful lot. It's a weird look. I get anybody that thinks it's just a silly pick or wants to watch one because, again, you just don't see horses with this type of resume in this barn in spots like this. We obviously both agree on the number eight horse, 10 Downing Street, running well today, most likely for Joe Orsino. A need a drop that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Need a drop, and I think that horse can run well in there. Now, I'm interesting to go, well, the, the beauty of the Rainbow Six, it starts at race number five, so I have a chance to go back and look at your horse and see what I, I you know, I sort of just dismissed it. Let me watch one. You I know? think you're supposed to <laughs> use my horse, man. All right. All right. Let's move on to race number six. Halfway home on day number nine here at GP as we bring on these three and up. Philly Amare, 12 5 claimers. They meet on the dirt. And this is kind of your typical at this time of the year, Gulfstream Park, lower level claiming race. Good size field, number of horses that make sense, and you can make a legitimate case for on paper. And what also jumped off the page, and I think it's a major plot line and major subject to today's six, the amount of recent acquisitions in the race. You've got Safi Joseph Jr. with the number three Scotland Bay, who Ronnie and I have in the mix. Threat, who we'll look at a replay of. Second time out for Gilberto Zerpa off the claim, and we'll get to the Gullo horse and competitive player who Ronnie and I have on top. Threat, though, is a major threat once again as this Philly by Cantharos comes out of a daylight score and off the turf race and she was favored but her body of work altogether has been very solid on the year and the proof is in the pudding as you've got a Philly who just poured it on last time out all by herself and undoubtedly Ronnie has top connections in her corner. Yeah top connection she was looking for someone to threaten her but it did not happen making a first start she cruised on that it was wet track it was listed as good you see it it's not that wet that afternoon to that, that that was 12-5 condition claimers. Won that race by over five lengths. You mentioned Gilberto Zerpa, MSCL Jaramillo going for two in a row. So lots to like. Another performance like that on a track here that always plays fair to horses that run like that could be very dangerous in there. But you and I have been watching the work that uh, that Gary Gullo has been doing over the last couple of days. And boy, he, he, that's a barn you really got to pay attention to. Oh, Gary's as sharp as they come and has a very blue-collar workman-like uh, stable. And he's one of the, uh, the trainers I've got in the opening leg of my late pick five that saw me, I think, go 24 even. In fact, definitely 24 even. I am singling, and I know, admittedly, it might be a touch or a tad light in the ninth race, standing alone with Songer, because he is such a, a deep, late running plotter type closer but I feel he's set for his best I see Ronnie has him on top as well and he should run really big today I think he's all if you need the single to me he was the best horse to do it with in the ninth well, just uh, to show you how crazy I am, my long shot is in that race a little later on. It's a tours for one reason only, speed and Luis Saez in the saddle, because I think you're absolutely right. If the, someone challenges the, the other horses in the race, it sets up personally, perfectly Excuse me for Songer. On a non-stakes level around these parts, I would probably venture to say I'd put up Songer's closing kick from the court of Paul Holm than just about any other allowance caliber horse on the grounds. He, once he gets his momentum, man, he can really pour it on, and I'm hoping he does that today. But moving back to the opening leg in which saw me use three, but we both like the 10 competitive player on top, and here's a real weird, narrow knee stat, but it's <laughs> one that works perfectly with competitive player here in today's sixth race. This is Gary Gullo, first off the claim, running horses back within a week. He's gone three for six, which to me, even having a six horse sample in such a narrow statistic says something. And this horse, this mare by Cool Co Man, Ronnie, fits this to a T. Fits it to a T. You get Nick Juarez the top, the six time local winner. So this horse knows its way around this track. And the reasoning I put it on top in there, you met in Scotland Bay. And also Thread. I think the three you use are the three I use. And I'm glad you got all three on top of your ticket. And Gary Gullo, by the way, not only two for two here at the current stand, he is one with his last six starters two in Florida, four up in New York. So he's trying to make it seven consecutive wins today. Wow. And he's won already seven out of his last eight since the end of November. 
November. Pretty cool. I think Frank Passero may have the record. Yeah. 16 Four, wins. 14, 16 yeah, right here. A big to. number, but Gary's uh, nearing the halfway point there, and we wish him luck today with competitive player. He is definitely one of the good guys. Speaking of good, well, this one's probably probably better than good. It's a very solid-looking two-year-old maiden special weight on tap today, which will kick off the late pick four on the main track. And something might have to give early on between the three impact player and the seven totally boss. They've got top connections, they've got early speed, and I think even though I put them one, two, and you clearly agreed, they might hook up. Things should be pretty interesting in the first hundred yards or so because they both are fast. And number three impact players turning back to six furlongs with blinkers added to first race and stalking the pace and weakening to finish fifth going to one turn mile at Belmont. I like the fact that they added the blinkers this afternoon and totally bores Brian Lynch. Talking about a guy who's going great guns and his horses look fantastic. These are the two logical ones in the race. They kind of stay at it at speed though, but you're getting John Velasquez on impact player. If there's anybody who's going to judge where to go with this horse, it's Johnny Velasquez. Now, he does break inside the seven totally boss who's coming to us by way of Del Mar. And we saw one thing constant last week. That was Brian Lynch being very dangerous and very well-intentioned with his Gulfstream shippers as he won a pair of races, one with Eight Town, who might be on the verge, the cusp of Stakes Company. And even Treasure in Heaven looked good breaking her maiden as a two-year-old here Sunday. A couple of firsters in the race. Road to Damascus for the Pletcher Barn. Really pricey pioneer of the Nile Colt. A rare ride, though, for Joel. Rosario for Todd and then Jeremiah Engelhardt. Welcome to Florida, bud. He's a <laughs> longtime friend of mine. Love Jeremiah and he's got the five projector. Yeah, projector. And wrote to Damascus, uh, you know, from Todd Pletcher, as you mentioned, uh, sort of a uh, 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 excuse me, pioneer of the Nile, working well at Palm Beach Downs. All right, two for Todd, Brian Lynch, Jeremiah, the gang's all here in race number seven. Eighth race on the program, two lifetime claiming race out of the shoot at one mile. To me, and maybe you saw the, the comment I made with my late pick five ticket, it's either the two scenarios, King Power controlling, <laughs> which he's probably gonna do today for Armando de la Serta, and wiring or the late running drop down for Joe Orsino, midnight on Broadway, handles the class dip and the mile and cuts him down. Yeah, and that one was flatted by uh, Rally Five right to finish second behind that repeat winner, Canta Claro, uh, who was just in great form throughout the uh, Gulfstream Park West he meeting. He was my GPW <laughs> yeah, horse that's of the right, night, man. He was your GPW horse, so keen off that, this one is flatted by that. Also used number eight, so did you in third, Little Matt. I want to give you a stat on Victor Barboza Jr. Found this intriguing. First start after a claim, all claiming levels on the dirt. He's oh, he's only 14 for 31, wow. 45 percent, 87 percent of the money with a positive return of investment. So, little Matt, uh, you got to keep that horse in mind. Victor Barboza Jr., as we mention all the time here on this show, just does a fantastic job, especially with this angle. And he might be a trainer at least early on in this meet. Maybe you get a couple of prices on him. I don't think he's a household name quite yet to the national horse playing population. Believe me, this guy is a talented trainer and a sharp horseman. Let's move on to the crew and race number nine, a good-looking uh, $25,000 optional claiming race on the turf at a mile and a 16th. Again, I needed a single somewhere to keep the late pick five ticket. It's always about the budget, man. <laughs> Had to keep it affordable. Wish we could just fire away and give out, you know, a monster spread ticket. But let's show you Songer's last race, November 5th. That was Breeders' Cup weekend over at Gulfstream Park West. And that weekend was right around the time that turf course over in Miami Gardens really started to favor horses that had early speed. So he's up against it from that standpoint. He hadn't run since the end of June, so he's off a little bit of a layoff. And he met a really worthy, sharp, informed foe at the time into craziness. And you can watch Songer in the white cap and the blue silks. Watch him finish up. Even though this race has already decided, he was getting to the craziness late over a turf course that really didn't play to his strengths. I think he's ready for his best today. And I think that race sets him up perfectly for, for this afternoon. I was mentioning just a little fact of my long shot, just for just for the facts. The two horse just has speed in Luis Saez. Maybe doesn't win it, but holds on for a share because speed has been pretty solid yes, on this turf course too. So. And a big early scratch in the pace department. We had very few scratches on the card, which is obviously a great thing, but Taylor Fancy scratched out of the ninth today. That may move up your long shot, just the facts. Just the facts, sir. Just the facts. That's it. That's uh, what we give you here. Yep, uh, exactly. As we wrap things up, race number 10, we will do it quickly. A two-lifetime 16K claimer on the turf. 
don't sell. My opinion in this race isn't that strong, so I wanted to go with a couple of like mid-priced horses. Give a look to Geo Patricia and Diamond Love, who are coming out of the same bias compromise trip and race at GPW on the turf course over there, November 10th. I went with the two sister drama move to the Yvonne Bell Swab on uh, via the claim, making its local return. Like the job that this guy does first off the claim, keep the status quo. I got Edgar's eyes in the saddle. That was my thought. Process. My Sunday hero, <laughs> Yvonne right. Bell Sword, Dizzy Gillespie, baby, <laughs> 27 bucks. We'll try not to regress today. Right. No, no bounce. No bounce. No bounce. The only thing bouncing, maybe a coconut off your head. <laughs> exactly. All right. It's Ronnie and I all day with you. Pete Aiello standing by. He'll bring you the scratches and changes in just a few moments.